so PC principle, final justice, we reached the end of the arc here. What do we find out? The main thing that we find out is who's doing the gentrification. The PC principle shows us it's not humans. I love the allusion to the Indiana Jones movie where he goes into the... Um, you know, the bar in the winter, and, you know, he starts killing all of the ads, you know, essentially. Um, you know, but that's what he finds. That gentrification is not done by human beings. We have so much stuff going on here. We have, um, you know, South Park taking a very libertarian stance on gun violence and guns with the whole part about the, the gun show. Let's go to the safest uh, place is where everybody has guns. <laughs> um, but, you know, like, they're... they're they're going in on, you know, um, I, I think the whole season, it's pretty interesting. Although they lampoon um, gentrification and political correctness in a way, they don't say that actually political correctness is, is, is stupid. They're just saying that um, they're making a comment on the, on the method uh, of, being, of being PC and the, um, the reason for being PC and the fact that really that political correctness can be commodified. And I think that's a very, very important part, okay? Um, but South Park rips into people who are afraid of having their guns stolen. I mean, that they're taken, you know, by the, by the government. Um, and then you also start to see, like, an element of them commenting on Russia um, and the Russian manipulation of, uh, of the 2016 uh, political election here. More on p political correctness, more on advertising, okay? And then we have a political, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, PC Principles final speech, which is a sort of a, an allusion to, um, to ISIS. It's a commentary there on terror. I mean, you're just getting so much. I mean, really, like, this season and this episode, it's, 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 you know, it may not be, like, the funniest stuff, specifically in the last, the last couple episodes, um, although, although there are moments. It's just... I mean, it's a pretty well thought out arc. I mean, just overall how they kind of tie it all together um, at the end and they make sense through somewhat disparate, uh, you know, narrative elements. Um, but, you know, they kind of come to this, this, they kind of come to this, you know, conclusion like, who's to blame for the gentrification? I mean, for, for, uh, 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 for all this, you know, the gentrification, um, you know, the, the ads, everything, and, and, you know, ultimately, you know, blame is in some ways laid on the Whole Foods, which, <laughs> you know, takes off and leaves, um, but really, what's the blame for all, like, the sort of, the, 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 the end outcome in this episode is the fact that, uh, is that people lose the ability to think critically, in, in, in independently. And that's what really becomes a heavy critique throughout this whole, this whole season, is the lack of uh, independent and critical thought, just following, just doing um, you know, what meets social standards, et cetera, or what you feel pressured to do, and not thinking and speaking about it, which is one of their challenges to PC-ness, that you know, political, uh, political correct culture doesn't necessarily inhibit I mean, does not necessarily encourage free thought, free, free thought, right? Because you, you become so afraid of offending that you don't say things that you think that may not necessarily be offensive, but you're just so worried about having, um, you know, potential microaggression being being called out. Um, woo woo. Okay, but you know what's happening in South Park? Is it the Whole Foods to blame, or is it the fact that the people lack the ability to think critically? Lack the ability. Um, to understand the difference between ads and content, you know. Um, but basically, in, in South Park, promoted content, you know, these ads look and talk like people, and their idea is that the ads are going to gentrify the human race, right, by basically making things too expensive to afford. That's kind of like becomes like the story. It's like, let's basically get rid of these idiots. <laughs> Uh, um, let's gentrify them and let's just make it just too expensive for people to, to afford, afford anything. Um, and we'll get rid of like the human race, the ugly, you know, the ugly in society, which is us, which is all of us. 
And I, I really love this line by Nathan. Um, PC, what, what is PC but a, a verbal form of gentrification? You spruce everything up, get rid of the ugly in order to create a false sense of paradise. Only one thing could live in a world in that world in ads. I just thought that was just a real interesting uh, you know, part of it. Number one, equating political correctness to, gentrifica uh, to gentrification, right? Where it's like, what does gentrification do? It, it, covers, up, it covers up the problem um, in some ways, but it doesn't necessarily you know, fix the problem. And, and, and the problem is economic inequity, really. really. Like, it doesn't address that. It actually furthers that. So what they're trying to allude to in so many ways by, by saying that um, you know, political correctness is verbal gentrification is that in some ways, um, you know, changing language or how you, you, you get people to change language um, doesn't actually deal with the problems, right? The problems still exist under sprucing, on how you spruce up language and make it non-offensive. So just some things to think about. What do you think, what do you think about this equivalence to verbal gentrification um, and, and, and political correctness? Like, how do you see it? You know, what do you, what do you think about that? Is it bullshit? Like, what do you think? I mean, it's, again, it's super hard for me to ask these questions now because this is where I want to see you and smell your farts. Not really, but, you know, be in the same space, you know, where I can, like, hear your ideas, you know, um, you know, so call, call me. <laughs> I'm bored, okay? Um, but another thing they, they try to address, too, through this, this season is can uh, PC culture be a form of bullying? And that's a very interesting point to bring up through the arc of the, the story is how can it be bullying? If you really think what about what bullying really is, right? And we all agree that bullying is wrong, we, you know, um, but like how can you see like the methods of articulating political correctness can be seen as bullying to specifically to people who, who are, are being asked to change their language, asked to, asked to change or, you know, forced in some ways, um, again, without articulation of the actual issues and more articulation, right? It's often being shamed, um, you know, having the microaggressions and privilege checked publicly. Um, does that encourage change, the type of progress that we all, we all really want, right, ultimately? And they're kind of look, suggesting that PC can be bullying at times. I mean, you, you have PC principal who is kind of a bully in some of the earlier episodes. But is there value to challenging pro political correctness? Not necessarily fighting back against the idea that, you know, about equity and that we should look out for and think about, you know, groups who are marginalized in society. Like, I think, you know, that's great, but like, and right, you know, like, and, and we should be mindful of language, but what do you think, like, do you think that you know, being specifically at a, a liberal school, you know, do you think that it's fair to maybe challenge methods of encouraging political correctness? I mean, you probably see it in some of your classes, with some of your faculty, with student groups on campus. Like, how is equity through PC be, being addressed? And, and do you think that it actually creates the type of change that it, that it should create? Or could it be used with different methods, because again, like, don't worry about me. Don't worry about, you know, some, some other people, right, who, who are on the team. They're on the team, you know what I'm saying? But like, like I said, it's like your, your, your uncle, you, you know what I'm saying, your old uncle or whatever, you know, who isn't PC, who, you know, thinks a lot of, calls you a social justice warrior, and, you know, all that shit, and, you know, pejoratively, right? Although, like, social justice is fucking awesome, but, like, using that term is, is, is inheriting, inherently negative in terms of how it's often used. You know, um, 
But I think, you know, is it worthwhile to think about, and this is what I really think is at the heart of the, the episode in so many ways, is to think about how do we get to be a more equitable society? Of course, it's, it's through changing language. But is changing language and how we talk about people, you know, the means to the end? It's part of the, the recipe, you know, ultimately. But some people aren't going to be able to digest that type of spice, if, if you know what I mean. So, so I think there is, you know, it does give us some things to rethink about with you know, people who do believe in equity, how we articulate it um, to not necessarily people who don't believe in equity, but maybe people who don't believe in some of the, the uh, you know, think that political correctness is silly, that, it, you know, that we need a little reality, you need to be told how it is, you know, the world isn't one big liberal arts college campus, you know, um, whatever. Um, you know, and is there value in maybe questioning some of, some of these things? And I think, you know, I asked you to watch the Bill Maher thing, and there's a link to it in the slides, you know, I mean, you know, can comedy be PC? Should it have to be PC? What happens when we make comedy be politically correct, or when we encourage that? And what does that say about free speech? Again, we have to really articulate the difference between hate speech and, and free speech, which, you know, at its core, the basic difference, the basic, basic, basic difference is that, uh, you know, hate speech is encouraging violence against uh, a particular, a particular, a particular group. But it's hard to say where, you know, what's the real hard line between a lot of really negative free speech that can eventually lead to violence, you know, towards towards a group or encouraging violence towards towards a group. Uh, but what is the role of comedy in this whole thing? And is comedy there to challenge political correctness?